thousands of dealers miss when you're at an auction talking the other day, hey, see what I bought, see what I paid, see what I think I stole this one, I paid too much for that one, right? It, 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 it enables that banter by using the tool because you're actually already getting an opinion, not only opinion, a guarantee of how much that car is worth, but because we're not the best end user, we happen to be, uh, let's call it the insurance, to enable you to know that's a baseline that if you're going to be the best end user, you can pay more. And this is the reason why. This is how many there are. This is how fast they sell. This is all due to, and how this one relates to the rest of the marketplace. Does that mean you need to sell it to the worst one? Of course not. If you got the best one, our suggested price that you would retail it for is can be thousands more than the price of some other raggedy ass, worn out, bad car facts, empty ass, ex rental car uh, um, um, to retail for. Now, why is that important? It's not to dictate to anybody that's what you should be asking. It's the suggestion instantaneously for you to make a better decision, knowing where it's been. Knowing the other guy had it in stock for 123 days and he couldn't sell it. You're so much smarter than he is. You will be able to sell it and you'll be able to ask two or 3,000 more. Uh. See, I'm suggesting take a second look. Use your brain one last little second to think about that. Is this an inept person that had it for sale? If it is, and they're in the middle of East Jabip and they don't know anything Maybe you'll be the lucky guy that can get three grand more for that exact same car with the exact same miles, right? All of these things are whispers that we've enabled uh, anybody using our little tool set to actually leverage. You see what I'm saying? It's not any, well, if you do this, you're stupid. No. Um, I, I see what that car brought up for 3,000 more than what they said it would bring at the auction. It's possible. But you know what happens? A good one, something that has some desirability, it can bring irrationally more because it has, let's call it um, uh, a better end use case for more individuals. And what does that do when gold is selling today for sixteen twenty five and tomorrow morning at seventeen twenty? It means that the general marketplace has dictated that that particular commodity in this particular market for all the socioeconomic situations, it's worth more. Therefore, people are willing more. You know what else it means? You can duplicate that. So theoretically, when these anomalies occur, what does it do to help us understand when something similar occurs or comes into the market to not be surprised by something that brings a moonshot or something that brings no bid whatsoever, even though rationally, oh, it's got to be worth that. You ever hear that statement? Oh, it's got to be worth that. I saw one. Yeah, it's got to be worth that, but don't necessarily got to be worth that because if you got something that don't have any kind of desirability, there's a reason why there ain't nobody else chasing it. You see, the beauty of the ask too little to get too much theory right? Not theory, but the practice of ask too little to get too much. It reveals exactly what we're talking about. It reveals that X rental car was an Avis car two years ago. It's got 29,000 miles because since then, whoever bought it from Avis never sold it. It's bounced from dealer to dealer, auction to auction. It's still an X Avis car. You dig it? It ain't never going to pop wings and turn into a levitating, beautiful unit. It ain't never going to happen. Therefore, some, it, until a falls into a different category. Now it's so old and so cheap, it has really low miles, and somebody's, oh, I like that low mileage X rental car that never found a garage. It's been bouncing from dealer to dealer over the last three years. You follow me? Once again, these are nuanceical issues that every single time you vend a code of car, you can use it on any platform. These things are revealed. So, is it a one to one every time you do it something pops out and it can save you a thousand or two thousand or three thousand? No, not necessarily. But I guarantee if you're using it consistently for all different reasons, you follow me? Uh, it, all the way through to what we're finding is dealers that use it on their website to value their trade are getting tremendous uh, 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 uptick in terms of conversion of let's call it a good CSI score because you didn't have one of these ones ratings because, well, you know, it looked, sounded like a great idea. Carvana is going to drop off the car and they didn't get here and it didn't do it. And they did it. See, the, the fear of that to me, mm -mm, I, I have utterly no question. Um, right now is a, uh, um, a delic time for a dealer with a brain 
that's not just like going along with the the the, the wind, uh, you know, the, the, doing what they used to do in order to survive. But using your brain and using helpful software to um, enable what I call a Carvana esque experience. Price up front, it's no problem. We'll definitely price it. Use the tool. You can price it up front in two seconds. When they get there, it's got a fart in the trunk. It's no problem. Just memorialize the fart in the trunk. And it says minus 375, fart in trunk. Now, the customer can't deny that, but the experience hasn't been uh, marginalized in any way, shape, or form. You follow me? Now, once you've plugged in your OBD and it tells you this, this, and this, and now you know whether you're going to keep the car for wholesale or you or keep the car for retail where you're going to hold wholesale it. That happens instantaneously. These are things that, you know, as we uh, bring them to the market, all dealers can find a very useful, um, um, easy to use. We build everything to be a lowest common denominator user case, a two, a two, never 11, never 17, a two. In other words, where you get the information necessary to enable uh, a communication, knowledge, decision-making um, um, in a matter of seconds uh, uh, to be, I would call it, more informed. I'm not saying we're right and everybody else is wrong. I'm not saying that at all. I'm saying to be more informed as if you're talking to a professional and asking them certain questions about any car, no matter what it is, a new Rolls-Royce or a junk-blown motor caravan, you're getting an opinion that's insured to help you make decisions. And I think if you think about that for a second, um, it, it kind of gets you to the point where maybe it's not the the full thing where you're getting financed and everybody knows what their payment is from Corvana, but you're really getting to a point where you have a different level of, uh, I would call it knowledge, and then the ability to transmit that knowledge to transparency or perceived transparency uh, to your customer. Does that make any sense to you, Shawnee, me boy? I think you uh, you reframe the whole how I was thinking about it wonderfully. That's that's phenomenal. You let let the uh, let those guys do the work for you. They're bidding on the cars that they're going to buy inside their category. Um, and and then Shoney, I didn't finish up. that. I didn't finish that. Watch tomorrow. If we got 600 cars going to the block tomorrow, you're going to see Carvana banging away. And God bless them. I love it. And I appreciate it and all the rest of it, right? For will be right there. CarMax, even going to be, but CarMax is going to be in the lane, so you don't know when they're really bidding. But I guarantee you when the, when the hammer comes down, you see CarMax 67 times tomorrow, you'll understand what happened. And when you actually examine that car, they didn't pay too much. I want to sell them. 100 cars tomorrow. I really do. But I really hope I don't sell them any because that means we got market value and they weren't picking our pockets on the cars that didn't bring enough money. I can only tell you this is not a in any way, shape or form a horseshit story. You follow me? It's an absolute fact. You follow me? These folks ain't paying over market value for nothing. You can feel that way because you get frustrated, Mr. Proxy Bidder. You follow me? Or Mr. I'm standing there trying to bid and they're bidding and you're already pissed off. Cause, but they're only bidding to the point where the car's worth that much money. It ain't worth less than that. You see that? I, I didn't mean to interrupt you, Sean, but it's really, an important, it's really something that would take two or three hours to dissect and watch to demonstrate. So hopefully we're going to get these little knucklehead calls to the point where we'll be able to demonstrate them. Unfortunately, Thursday's a bad day to do it because there ain't no good auctions on a Thursday where you can actually watch it happening. You dig it? A Wednesday's a great day. A Friday's a decent day, but we're a little busy on a Friday. So a Tuesday, you could even do it in an Orlando or a Baltimore or a whatever, right? Where you could actually do a call and actually demonstrate what we're talking about. And what that really does is, you know, fear is all about lack of knowledge, right? When you're afraid of something, when you actually get to know what it is, you might not even be afraid to go banging with them. You follow me? If the fear is, oh, Jesus Christ, look how big they are. Look what they do. It's really, I'm shitting in my pants. I'm saying, nah, I ain't got no fear of that. I swear to God, I don't. And I don't think any dealer, when they really examine it, need to have any kind of fear at all. All you have to do is get up early, go to bed late, work your balls off in between, and do what you're supposed to do. You see what I'm saying to you? I don't, I don't really see this as a, uh, you know, there's not going to be any more car dealers someday because they said that on an ad somewhere. No, I think it's the opposite, though. They're going to do good. That don't mean we're not going to do any better. I'm sorry to interrupt you, Shawnee. No, wonderful. And a great way to end it. Thank you, Bob. Have fun, everybody.